This is lesson 1.5 about word order. And the big thing to know is word order actually matters. When you're creating a query, you want to think about what is the most natural order of your query terms. So if you have terms that are, for example, two words, like a city name, say San Francisco, you probably want to say San Francisco, not Francisco San. So those will matter. But otherwise, word order matters more generally. So it's true that every word in a query matters, as well as the word order sequence mattering. So here's an example. You could do the single term for a query like who. What is that? You'll find out quickly. It's the World Health Organization. So this is a really well-known website. So naturally, a query like who will take you there. But suppose you modify it just a little bit and add the article A in front of this. So what is a who or a who? In this case, it's a reference to the Dr. Seuss book, which has lots of who's as small furry creatures inside of it. And by adding the article in front, it makes a difference. It makes a difference so much so that if you change the article say to say the, like this, the who, you get a reference to an English rock band. So even little words matter. And of course, if you switch that around to who, the, I don't know what you'll get. You'll get something that's probably not exactly what you're looking for in this space. So word order matters. So if we do something like sky blue or blue sky, what kind of difference would that make in the results? Well, if you look here, if I say blue sky, I get a bunch of references to different restaurants, different shops, and so on in the area that I'm living, in this case, in the San Francisco Bay Area. That's great, but if you're looking for sky blue, like the color, if you have to, you have to put those words in that order. You can see that here. And when you do the sky blue query, you get this beautiful set of chips and images and colors. It's exactly what you think. So word order really does matter. Think about that as you're putting together your queries. For instance, dog chow is something your dogs eat. A chow dog is a very fuzzy animal. So that is an example of a real difference in word order. It's also important to realize that when you're doing your queries, capitalization doesn't matter to Google. Yes, it's important typographically, but here you see two queries side by side, red delicious in all lowercase and red delicious with a weird mixed case. And you can see the results are exactly the same. So capitalization in the middle, the beginning, the end, it doesn't matter. We found that people don't do it consistently enough for us to use it as a search signal, so we've just given up on it. On the other hand, special characters do matter. So a couple of years ago, lots of special characters were just dropped. They were difficult to index, but we figured out how to do that. And now you can search for different kinds of single symbols, like the paragraph symbol, the radical sign, the not equal sign, and so on. In particular, you can use these for technical queries like C++ or C Sharp, both programming languages. But when you use that character, the sharp symbol or the pound symbol, you can use it either before a term or after a term. Notice that if it's got a space between it, so sharp character, space, and then a second character, second term, that's actually two different queries, two different query terms separated. If you put them adjacent to each other with no space between them, that becomes an independent search term. That's how you can search for hashtags. We also look for things like dollar signs or at symbols or percent symbols and so on. And again, if you put it next to the term you're searching for, that's a special unit, a thing you can search for in and of itself. We also allow you to search for characters you might not have thought about. You can search, for example, for Greek characters like omega or alpha. You can also search for emojis. So in this example, I've got I heart New York. You could replace that with I heart whatever, and you will be able to search for terms and sentences that appear anywhere on the web like that. And we can index all of the emojis in the world. So the beer character or whatever you'd like to search for, we can search for that. Another thing to know about your searching is that Google has an incredibly great spell correction system. So we've discovered that there are 30,000 creative ways to misspell Britney Spears' name. Who knew? But we now correct all of those into the appropriate spelling for that 
person. But I want to show you something in particular. So obviously we have a lot of ways to misspell Britney Spears, but if I do B-R-I-T-T-T -T, like this, it should spell correct it, right? And it says yes, in fact it does. But now if I want to look for my friend who actually spells hers in an interesting way with three T's, what I would do is put double quotes around the variant spelling of her name like that. So this is not the misspelling. I'm saying with the double quotes, I want really that spelling. And when you do that, it says, did you mean Brittany in that spelling? But in fact, you can see there are multiple people who really do spell their name with three Ts. Who knew? This is the way you can find it. Now what I'd like you to do is go on to the next activity, click on the arrow, and see if you can use your newly acquired skills to solve the questions there.